Will the Pac-12 break up? And if it happens, where will each school go? This is the questions that Dennis Dodd this morning of CBS Sports is asking. He gives some of his answers. Episode 154 of College Football's Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. We cover everything in college football because we love everything in college football. And if you do as well, if you need that little bit of extra content to get you through the day, subscribe to our channel. Smash that like button. Share the video with your family and friends. Let's not waste any more time. This is an article just released. Will the Pac-12 break up? Where each team will go if league disintegrates over the media rights deal. What's ahead for the Pac-12 and college football if its top remaining teams depart? Dennis Dodd, 39 minutes to go. We're going to be going through this article. It's a long article, so hang with us. And I'm going to give you my comments after this article. I want you to put down your comments and thoughts in the comments section below the video. In the article. A college landscape without the Pac-12 has become a storyline worth considering through a breakup of the 107-year-old league isn't particularly likely. Industry sources still project a media rights deal split between ESPN and Amazon for the embattled conference. We agree here at Peak Around the Corner, but we only give it about a minus 110 as of this morning, slightly the chalk that the Pac-12 pulls through and survives. However, dissolution of the Pac-12 is being talked about openly in those same industry circles as a potential consequence if the league does not wrap up its new deal soon. The key word is soon. It's got to happen soon. The fact that it could happen in these tenuous times is enough to project what the process might look like. So CBS, Dennis Dodd, he's going there. He's going there February 17th. What would it look like if the implosion happens? Back to the article. Multiple sources tell CBS Sports the league is struggling to match its desired value for its 10-team league, south of $400 million annually, south of, of course, the $4 million per school, following the departures of USC, UCLA to the Big Ten. The most compelling reason? As it stands, the Pac-12 inventory of games is not something broadcast linear cable or streaming must have at this point. It's not a must have at this point. Not without USC and UCLA. Not with the league in its eighth month since losing its two flagships. And not within the three and a half months have passed after the Pac-12 was leapfrogged by the Big 12. The Big 10 is now coast to coast, spread across the three major broadcast networks, CBS, Fox, NBC. ESPN has gone all in on the SEC with an exclusive deal, including the lucrative 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time window on Saturdays, as well as the primetime slot with some of the highest rated inventory in the sport. The ACC is locked in through the 2036 as a stable number that is expected to grow as the ACC network continues to throw off revenue. It's not going to grow that much. It's not going to grow that much. That's an episode of another day. The Big 12 has staked its claim with the Fox and ESPN as it's looking to get better with bigger with expansion. There is a finite amount of any potential rights holders willing to pay for a damaged conference that is last among the Power Five to complete a new media rights deal. Perhaps that was the implicit intent of the conference's recent statement from its president to calm fears. Now consider what has impacted the Pac-12 and some of its potential bidders just since the beginning of the year. The league discovered it may owe a media partner $50 million. Disney announced it's laying off 7,000 employees in restructuring. Amazon recently laid off 60% of its workforce, 18,000 globally. Parent company of Google, Alphabet, cut 12,000 jobs. The Pac-12 may have simply waited too long to do a deal that makes financial sense to some of its members, to some of its members. CBS Sports previously reported the Pac-12 may have to commit to expansion in order in order to maximize the value of the deal when we went through that process on a live show last night. If you missed it, go watch it. We talked about how expansion might be able to juice enough money out of the playoff revenue distribution model and it might get this deal done. 
The bulk of the other Power 5 games are on what are still reliable linear platforms, broadcast cable. Linear continues to outperform streaming by a large margin. Consider during the 2022 season, the SEC and the Big Ten had a combined 50 conference games that finished in the top seven of the weekly TV ratings. The Pac-12 had such one game, one such game, that didn't include UCLA or UCLA, according to Sports Media Watch. When the Big 12 similarly lost its two flagship programs, the league acted decisively to expand under then-Commissioner Bob Bowlesby. Under the new Commissioner Brett Yomark, the Big 12 jumped ahead of the Pac-12 with the new media rights deal. The Pac-12 has reached a point where the broadcast windows on the best networks are filled with premium content from other conferences while streaming remains an unproven home. Did the league simply overvalue itself? itself? Yes, they did. Taking all that into account, here's a step-by-step look at what would happen if the Pac-12 disbanded. Why would the Pac-12 break up? Basically, the current members could get nervous enough over a lack of value coming back to them in the media rights deal. In conjunction with the dissipating exposure, which is a huge component, it is the biggest component to all of this, and perceive, according to Peek Around the Corner, and perceive prominence for the university and athletic programs. How will Pac-12 games be seen by a broad audience if they're not on TV or the best windows, which are filling up fast? If significantly more than half of the future Pac-12 games project to be on a streaming service, as CBS Sports previously reported, that's a bad sign. Again, Linear is still the preferred delivering system uh, for live sports. On a streaming carrier, the Pac-12 would lose significantly significant visibility. That translates, for starters, to decline recruiting and a struggle to hire top coaches if their games will not be widely available. If individual or collective Pac-12 schools sense they can make more money and receive better exposure in Power 5 Conference, they have no choice but to look out for the long-term financial security for the universities and athletic departments, especially their athletic departments, the front porch of the universities. Football and basketball meteorites basically fund a program's remaining sports. Now, here's the money shot part of the article. This is what you've been waiting for. According to Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports, where would Pac-12 teams go? If the Pac-12 ultimately breaks up most but not all of its members would find waiting Power 5 homes. It would kick off another round of expansion and may result in further changes coming down the road. Four corner schools, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, Utah, have been the Big 12 targets in some form since USC and UCLA announced plans last summer to leave for the Big 10. That interest has picked up considerably with the Pac-12 appearing even more vulnerable. I want to read that sentence again from Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports, this morning, February 17th. That interest has picked up considerably with the Pac-12 appearing even more vulnerable. So according to CBS Sports, it's picked up. It's picked up. Your mark wants to have membership in the Pacific time zone. That would make the Big 12 the only conference to have members across all four time zones. It would make the Big 12 the only Power 5 conference, the only conference that Power 5 conference have Fox and ESPN. Both of those media companies ask their media partners. Adding the four corner schools would also make the Big 12 the third conference with 16 members joining the SEC and the Big 10. Arizona would enhance Big 12 basketball reputation. Gonzaga is in consideration as well as the basketball only member. Arizona State is one of the biggest sleeping giants in the country, playing in the nation's 11th biggest market, just outside Phoenix. Colorado is a big, former Big 12 member, achieving its greatest success in the league in the old Big 8. Deion Sanders at CU Colorado is a walking, talking marketing executive. Whatever he accomplishes, it can't hurt viewership. Utah, along with Oregon, is arguably the Pac-12's strongest remaining football program. It would also give BYU a travel partner. In essence, adding those four schools, 
Those four schools would create more Big 12 content and more time slots. Such an extension might reflect what the Pac-12 is worth right now. If the Big 12 expands, it contracts states' new teams would get 63% pro rata revenue from ESPN, approximately $20 million annually. If that's what compels those schools to move, what does it say about the current worth of the Pac-12? Doesn't say very well for the current worth of the Pac-12. Oregon and Washington. Assuming the four corners bolt first, we disagree with that at peak around the corner. We'll get to that after the article. Assuming the four corners bolt first, that creates a decision for what would become the two biggest available band, brands in the country. Keyword available, because with the leagues crumbling around it, Oregon, Washington would have options, and their best option would likely be the Big Ten. The schools align academically with the Big Ten. They would join USC and UCLA mitigating travel issues in the Big Ten for all four schools with more games closer to home. Even if the Pac-12 stays together, how long until Oregon and Washington have wandering eyes? Knight founder, Oregon benefactor, Phil Knight, has been looking out for the Ducks since early in the process. CBS confirmed Washington's interest in the Big Ten last fall, which was termed significant at the time if the Pac-12 didn't work out. It is known outgoing Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren wanted further conference expansion, seeking to add those two schools as well, Stanford and California. There was much pushback from the Big Ten presidents and athletic directors, but with the Pac-12 potentially decided its own fate, the Big Ten wouldn't be perceived as breaking up the league this time around, avoiding a possible costly legal challenge. This time, however, the Big Ten would likely want no part of Stanford and California. An 18 league would make the Big Ten the biggest in the history of major college football. It would create significant scheduling issues and result in bulking from existing right holders who will be asked to pay more. Perhaps the streaming service would get involved to defer costs. Best guess. Oregon and Washington would take less than the full Big Ten share, estimated at $75 million per school starting in 2024, at least initially, to be part of the richest conference in the land. The last four. Out of the upheaval emerges a conference of leftovers. Think of a Pac-12 or whatever it is called by then, attempting to forge ahead with its four remaining schools, Cal, Oregon State, Stanford, Washington State, while filling the rest of the conference with Mountain West programs. It could also go the other direction. San Diego State, SMU are already projected as expansion candidates if the Pac-12 survives. So pencil them in to make it the six teams in the hybrid league. A corner bar discussion might reveal a new Pac-12 that looks like this. California, Boise State, Fresno State, Oregon State, San Diego State, SMU, Stanford, Washington State. That lineup would reduce the Power 5 to a Power 4, creating implications beyond the Pac-12 itself. The Pac-12's best chance, finally, we'll end the article here. The way out of this muck is a 12-team league that includes San Diego State and SMU, appearing to present more value to potential right holders. The Pac-12 has been positioning itself for such an expansion while struggling to meet its goals. San Diego State gives the Pac-12 a presence once again in Southern California. SMU gives the league some things it's never possessed. Games in the noon Eastern time window and a recruiting foothold in Texas. We've, de we've detailed San Diego State's advantages. Adding the two teams would give the rights holders 90 Pac-12 games on which to get bid. But again, that's assuming there's enough bidder with enough money left for the remains of the conference champions. Okay, that was a long article. Thanks for hanging with us. But man, oh man, CBS Sports, Dennis Dodd, they went there. They talked about where would the schools go if the Pac-12 imploded. Now, to be fair, at the start of the article, Dennis Dotty, I think he put out there, he believes it's still going to happen. Pac-12 is still going to contain their 10 schools and expand with SMU and San Diego State. We believe that as well, peek around the corner. But things are getting dicier by the day in the article. In the CBS article, it says they need to get the deal done soon. Get it done soon. Now, there are some things I disagree with here in the article. 
It says the four corners, if they would go first, then Oregon and Washington would have wandering eyes, whatever. We believe here at Peak Around the Corner, Oregon and Washington would eat first. They would eat first. This, this, this implosion would start at the top of the domino. It would be Oregon and Washington. And right now, Peek Around the Corner believes there is no plans for Big Ten expansion. Even if Washington and Oregon comes out in a discount rate, if they decide, if they tell the Big Ten, we'll come in at half. We'll take $35 million each. Maybe, maybe Big Ten would reconsider. But at this point, it's a no-go for further launch in Big Ten expansion. For now. We'll see if it changes in the days ahead. So that means Oregon and Washington's real top option would be the Big 12, according to what we believe at Peak Around the Corner. We don't think ACC is an option because Oregon and Washington are not going to sign that ACC grant of rights all the way into 2036, which they would need to do if they join the ACC conference. So, four corner schools. Can they wait any longer? Would they try to bolt before Oregon and Washington if the implosion happens? We don't think so. We've been told no, but we'll see what happens. What are your thoughts? Where would the four corner schools go if Oregon and Washington took a Big 12 invite? Would they take a Big 12 invite? CBS and Dennis Dodd, they went there. They went there. And then, according to their speculation, estimation, projection on this implosion. They have the four corner schools going to the Big 12, Oregon and Washington taking a discount rate and the Big 10 opening up their arms. And then they would have California, Stanford playing schools like sharing the same conference as Boise State. Hmm. We don't think that would happen at peak around the corner. We shall see. But I want you to put your comments and thoughts down. We Last night on our live show, we talked about Pac-12 expansion. Tonight on our live show, we're going to be talking about the possible implosion. Truly for the first time, we're going to be discussing who would go where. And I want you all to, to call in. At, call in on our live show. Put your comments in the comment section during our live show. We're going to be going into it. Finally, really truly, here at Peek Around the Corner in a live show, we're going to be discussing all the speculation on where these schools would go because a deal, George Kleikoff, you've heard it from The Athletic. You've heard it from CBS Sports. You've heard it from Brett McMurphy. Things from SBJ Sports Business Journal. Right now, as it stands today, things are not going well in the negotiations. So what would happen if a Pac-12 conference imploded? Put down your comments and thoughts on this episode. And tonight, we're going to be tackling this speculation. We have to. It's time. CBS Sports did it. We're going to do it at Peek Around the Corner. Until next time, from all of us at Peek Around the Corner, which is tonight, please, you all take care of each other. Thank you so very much. <laughs>